Thanks, Rob. Okay. Um, today's session is uh, English language teacher development supports learning. Um, and I think it's great what uh, Rob and his team are doing with EFL Talks because this is basically the whole um, concept of what I'm going to be speaking about today, as well as Naziha. She was speaking about uh, professional learning networks. I'm going to be talking about uh, building your own community of uh, learning. Okay. Oops. Just let me. Um, so why is this topic important? I think that um, in the field of English language teaching, um, our, our profession is recognized globally. English is uh, the lingua franca, so we have um, classes and uh, teachers who are teaching uh, throughout the world. Uh, right now, this is EFL Talks in the Middle East, so we have the speakers here who are from uh, Kuwait, from Oman, from Saudi Arabia, from from the United Arab Emirates, uh, or Lebanon, so on and so forth. So it's an opportunity for us to share the best practices within our own communities and uh, helps educators themselves uh, foster and facilitate the learning process for, for their students because they're learning about uh, the best practices within the, the field and hopefully uh, are able to engage in their own learning process. So in order for us to, to build, teachers of English need to have a lifelong learning outlook in their practice. Um, and for me personally, this is something that I have um, incorporated into to my own, uh, own lifestyle. As Christine was saying and, and Nazia was saying as well, um, they, they go out and they, they share their knowledge um, a lot actually. All over the all over the globe, not just here within the Middle East. They they go to Pakistan. Christine goes to uh, Russia to lots of countries actually. So it's a it's a great way to establish um, communities of of learning. Okay. With that said, um, how can we go about doing this? Communities of of learning basically impact our our students' learning. By step one is uh, quality uh, professional development, and professional development has uh, lots of uh, lots of interesting um, aspects that we can uh, consider as professional development or professional learning, if you will. And I'll I'll share some of those later on in the future slides. And as we move from our, our professional learning or professional development opportunities, we hope that the educators and practitioners improve their knowledge, their skills, and their practice, which then, of course, would lend into the advancement of student learning opportunities and, and build a, a better understanding of what uh, happens in the, in the classroom. Um, quality PD is basically quality professional development must be organized, coherent, and provide ongoing learning opportunities. Learning needs to be aligned with the standards expected at your current organization, professional association, etc. And keeping this in mind, um, you take the professional standards. TESOL uh, International has professional standards. TESOL CAPE has standards for teachers of, of English. What do they say? Look in your your particular areas where you are teaching. Do they have specific standards that you need to be abiding by? Uh, learning should take place within a collaborative environment, therefore supporting the community of learning. And EFL Talks is a great example of a collaborative environment and, and supporting the community of, of learning for English language teachers. Step two, improve knowledge and skills and practice. Our professional learning can impact our knowledge, teaching practices, and, and beliefs, and it should go back into uh, the classroom. It, it allows us to apply what we have gained in the classroom, and our students should, at the end of the day, be the ones who benefit from this and um, have uh, deeper student learning that's, uh, that is occurring. <clears throat> so, which leads to deeper knowledge for, for our students, improvement of skills and application of knowledge, enhanced classroom instruction that facilitates student learning. Because at the end of the day, this is what we want. We want to facilitate our, our student uh, learning capabilities. Why promote a community of learning? 
Um, for me personally, at the institution where I work at, I, I have the uh, uh, the pleasure, I think, of being not only vice dean of the College of Humanities, but also the director of the Teaching and Learning Center. And this is something that I I am really trying to develop with um, uh, our higher education and teaching and learning certificate uh, program for the faculty members at our institution is really to develop this community of learning for our faculty members and so that can go back into the, the classroom for, for our students and support and facilitate their, their learning practices. So communities of learning help, it's, learners deserve qualified and competent teachers. This is the first thing I, I have to say. If, if you're going into the classroom, you need to be responsible for and accountable for what you are practicing inside the classroom. So having this lifelong learning uh, concept as a part of, of being an educator is, is extremely important and should be a requirement for all educators. Educators should be active members of their professional growth. This means that they need to be engaged in continuous improvement via their professional learning expenses, whether it's through TESOL International, whether it's through uh, formerly TESOL Arabia, but now ALT or KSALT TESOL here in uh, Saudi Arabia, so on and so forth. So these are these are opportunities, professional associations uh, that can help us uh, grow and, and develop our communities of learning, as well as within our own institutions. Um, and of course, obviously, it supports learning. It leads to higher student engagement in the classroom, it in, uh, as well as increasing student learning so that they can succeed and grow as individuals. Tips for creating a community of, of learning. Obviously, um, you need to know what is available in your specific environment and uh, setting. So uh, establishing a collaborative culture, this is a collective responsibility. So within your institution, you need to try to kind of foster or within your community uh, society, this collective responsibility as an educator for um, uh, learning. Uh, knowing the availability of resources, the actual capacity um, and structures that can be used. You have to know what's available to you within your specific environment so that you can work with what you have. And I have to say with the invention of technology and webinars and online conferences, um, my husband can, can vouch that I'm always attending uh, webinars. Establishing professional learning as, as a priority. Um, I can't emphasize this enough. If, if we want to uh, to uh, increase the the learning and, uh, of our students, we really have to take this seriously. Best practice and models of learning uh, for your student population, whether you're in K through 12, higher education, adult education, whatever the case may be, you need to know what are the best practices within that uh, arena. Opportunities for professional learning. Uh, the first thing I want to emphasize is reading. Uh, Nasia was talking about extensive reading, so on and so forth, but reading as uh, um, about the different uh, trends that are there, uh, current research of the different uh, methodologies or techniques that might be used in a classroom that can then be benefited in, in your particular environment. The EFL talk participation, you, as, as um, Rob was saying, you can go online and see the, the talks. Um, I've looked at some Jeremy uh, Harmer, his is uh, excellent uh, talk. Research both in and out of the classroom. Action research in the classroom. This is an excellent opportunity for you to learn and reflect and grow as an educator and improve what's happening inside your classroom. Conferences, workshops, seminars, forums. Webinars are a great way to learn, as I've said before. Online courses or take a course at a university near you. Join professional associations. There are uh, a plethora of uh, professional associations that can help you grow as an individual. MOOCs are another way um, of uh, learning more. Okay, reflective questions for you as I as I close. I think it's important that you know these topics are 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 really relevant. But I need you also to walk away with this and and think about um, for yourself. How does our personal development support learning in the classroom? at your institution? How are you an active participant of your own professional learning? And lastly, what can you do to boost professional learning at your institution? And if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to drop me an email. Thank you very much.